interesting talks. One first we I'll invite Dr. Professor John Moore sir to speak and then we'll be Vivek, Dr. Vivek. So he'll be speaking on tumors and 10, 10 minutes talks, last two talks. And then I'll like everybody to be join us for the gala evening, which is having light music plus a good night out without alcohol. So we're going to change gears again and uh, talk about shoulders a little bit. It's been a knee and hip kind of morning and afternoon. So uh, I did my shoulder fellowship with Richard Hawkins of the famous Hawkins sign uh, in Canada. And since then, I've tried to uh, stay up on the shoulder world. Here we go. So I was asked to say something about total ankles in America just to see if uh, India was falling behind. I don't think that's really the case. There's about 900,000 total knees, 900,000 total hips done in the country, and shoulders are less, and elbows and uh, ankles are less than that even. But the success rate's way less for ankles than it is for knees. So when it comes right down to ankles, this is um, six countries, and their registries indicated that there was a big interest in doing total ankles up until about 2010, and the uh, results weren't so good. They haven't gotten any better. It's been kind of flat since then. So there's ankles. Get back to shoulders a bit. Things that we don't do, what's the American experience? The idea about heating up a uh, capsule to stabilize shoulders for multi-directional instability and the like, that's gone away completely. We found that even though you're uh, cooking the capsule and making it shrink like bacon, uh, it kills the cells and may ultimately makes it uh, looser, not tighter. And that also heats the fluid and cooks the cartilage and kills the cartilage, which is the reason we see a whole bunch of total shoulders come to be is because somebody stuck an Oratech or a heat wand inside the shoulder has to not do that anymore. Same thing with indwelling pain catheters. The anesthetics that we put in the joints are toxic to cartilage as taught us by Constant Chu of Stanford, so we don't do indwelling catheters anymore. Uh, likewise, uh, trends in case volume hemiarthroplasties are going down. It's kind of analogous to doing a hemiarthroplasty or a bipolar in a hip. It's a good thing to do when an old person get in and out quickly and it's nice, but they don't last very long. And the studies clearly show that uh, they last less than 10 years and the glenoid wears away and it's a bad thing. So we rarely do those. Same thing with uh, cuffed hair arthroscopy, uh, arthroplasty sort of components, which is this. So the head's riding up because of a massive cuff defect and you're acetabularizing the, the uh, acromion. And so this prosthesis then surfaces the superior aspect of the head, so it's not rubbing bone on bone skin, the acromion. That's not done so much anymore because the results aren't great. There's other better things now. Uh, anatomic total shoulders uh, case volume is about the same, but reverses are really taking off. And maybe the biggest indication of reverses that are taking off is fractures. So part of that's because the results of open reduction internal fixation of proximal humerus fractures is abysmal and there's a big push to not even fix them at all, just let them heal as they are in the U.S. So this is a different approach to having a worn out shoulder. So if you have a young person with a worn out shoulder and they have good motion loss in a round head and only mild pain, but they really want to get back to their life because they can't move their shoulder, then this so-called CAM pro uh, uh, procedure is relatively good. It excites the osteophytes so there's no bony block to motion, do capsule or soft tissue releases so they can move again, decompressions if necessary, sometimes the axillary nervous scarred in, and then biceps tenodesis just to get rid of all the other reasons that it could hurt. Now just so we can talk about the rest of the talk, remember our shoulder, uh, shoulder osteology, the glenoids retroverted about 3 degrees, the humerus is retroverted about 20 or 30 degrees as opposed to the femur, of course, which is antiverted, the humerus is retroverted. So with anatomic TSA, this is a busy slide, lots of different things to think about on an anatomic, taking them one at a time. So this current gold standard for a total shoulder is a cemented, pegged, all polyethylene glenoid, but still that has a, a glenoid loosening rate of 32%, about a third of all the total shoulder complications are relative to loosening of the all polyglenoid. Uh, of course, the poly cement technique is horrible relative to knees where there's an absolutely good technique and a bad technique with shoulders. The cement technique is not nearly as good. So we decided to try metal back porous ingrowth uh, totals, and Exact Tech was one of the early ones, and it was a three times failure rate. Everything went wrong that could go wrong. The plastic dissociated from the metal backing, the poly wore, the screws broke, and it was a disaster. 
recently Lima's come out with another iteration, and we're trying that again. Rotator cuff uh, uh, wearing out occurs when we overstuff the humerus and we put the head too high, and the uh, rotator cuff is draped over the uh, humeral head, and that's a surefire way to make your uh, anatomic shoulder uh, fail. As far as what do we do about the humeral head replacement, we can now put on a cap, we can put on a, a, a ball, and we can attach it with a short or a long stem. The short stems are winning, just like short uh, hip stems are winning too, same on, on concept. Inlay and long lay humerus means that when we first started doing anatomic total shoulder, the, uh, the component was such it was flat on top of the humerus and the ball went off of that. But when they failed, which they sometimes do because the rotator cuff goes away in old people, then we tried to put on a reverse, which required the concave humeral uh, articulation. Then it was overstuffing the joint because we needed to have it not flush but inlaid. So now the, uh, the new anatomics have a concave uh, humeral component as well to tolerate uh, easy conversion of anatomic to reverses. The, uh, the nice little trick is when you find a uh, glenoid that's loose, which is a common thing when it's been cemented, it's actually pretty easy to take those out with the scope, and amazingly many of those do well. Uh, just by taking that out, leaving it be, if they're not very high demand and they're older, sometimes that's the final uh, procedure that needs to be done. The glenoid also does better if you inlay the, the uh, the uh, base plate or the uh, poly rather than onlay it. So rather than putting it on the face of that golf tee, you actually uh, inlay it so there's a rim of cartilage and bone around it. And so thereby you don't get the uh, rocking horse sort of mechanism where you teeter totter the uh, glenoid out. Plus that particular component has a flat back so it's not rounded, it's not gonna flip out on you anyhow. When it comes to reverses in glenoid treatment, uh, we used to try to put the glenoid low so we could not have to have scapular notching. We found that that's not necessary anymore because we put it really low. We overtension the deltoid, get a chromial stress fracture is a bad thing. So now we put it central. And then we still do the 10 degree inferior tilt of the uh, glenoid component so as to diminish that scapular notching. The, uh, when a shoulder does wear out, it always wears out into retroversion, nearly always. And so the treat ways to treat that are you can just put, play it where it lays, so to speak, put the uh, glenoid right on that retroverted, worn out uh, glenoid, and sometimes it's not too severe, that works out. You can put a wet metal wedge or an augment back there and try to restore the normal retroversion of the glenoid. Or you can just put a neutral base plate in, put screws in, and then bone graft behind it. All those things will work. But if you're working on uh, shoulders, you're always gonna see these things happen to the glenoid, and you don't need to memorize it, but you need to at least know that it, uh, Walsh uh, morphology classification of the glenoid exists. That's what it looks like. So it predicts what you have to do with the glenoid side. So if it's biconcave, you have to deal with that differently than if it's just regular central erosion. So if you do have uh, horrible glenoid erosion, that golf uh, tee has no bone left to put the golf ball on, then you have two really uh, good choices at this point. A custom glenoid component similar to a custom uh, 3D printed uh, acetabuli, and also you can use the alternative center line. The customer reverse is simply that, the, through 3D printing we restore the normal joint line of the glenoid, and we can screw it into place finding bone wherever it goes. They seem to last pretty well, almost makes shoulders back to normal again, it's impressive. This, the alternative center line is a little bit different where you just take this horrible looking x-ray top left, hardly any glenoid left, and you simply find where the depths of that glenoid vault are, and you put your center peg or screw into that deep, the deepest part of the bone, find whatever bone you have, and let it sit right there. It's certainly not pointing in the right direction, but it's seemingly because it's a universal joint functions adequately. When it comes to reverse, um, scapular notching is an issue, and lateral offset is the cure. This is what I'm talking about with scapular notching. Uh, top left is a grammont, type reverse where there is a horizontal proximal humerus and there's a, a 180 degree ball. And so it's cured by lateralizing the ball, making it more than 180 degree arc, making the, the humerus more vertical. So there's not so much material bu bumping into the uh, bottom of the uh, glenoid and scapula like in the top right photo. 
Um, when it comes to the scapularis, it's not a big deal whether you just repair it or let it fly. When you're lateralizing it like that, oftentimes the subscap doesn't reach anymore, so it's okay to let it fly. Not much difference. As far as instability prevention, reverses do dislocate. And just like a hip, you want to make the head big to minimize or, or maximize the jump distance. You can make uh, the uh, polyethylene liner deep and more constrained. When it comes to external rotation weakness, many people with the reverse have active abduction, which is okay, but they can't externally rotate, so they can't get their hands to their mouth. And the uh, infraspinatus uh, partial repair while you're doing the initial procedure is a good way to go. Repair as much as you can. You don't need to get a cup repair, but you do need to, to uh, reattach some of the infraspinatus and the external rotators as much as you can. The latissimus transfer by Gerber uh, has really fallen out of favor because it's a big operation in addition, and the amount of external rotation that's uh, recovered is very little. Now, more recently, we've gone to the lower trap transfer, which is also a really big operation, which kind of a uh, long run for a short leap um, result. So we're not going to go there too much. As far as reverses go, the indications are many and growing. Where I am, there's this, uh, one of the guys who popularized reverses lives right near me, so everybody gets reverses for everything. If you have an irreparable or large cuff tear, if you have bad osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, if you're old, if you have cuff tear arthropathy, if you have a failed prior procedure, if you have a complex fracture, even a partial thickness cuff tear in an old person can get a reverse. Uh, so there's the updated view on all the things we know about uh, total shoulder arthroplasty in 2023 from uh, Sarasota, Florida. Thank you.